dog let them handle me and drive me mad. If you can keep me, I want to stay with you forever. Nina Simone, Dr. Simone, a very warm welcome to the program. Thank you, Tim Sebastian. You have the same name as Bach, my first love. Ah, that's, I can't lose with that, can I? No, you can't. <laughs> you can't, but I can. Tell me about music as a political weapon that you've used it as. Oh, as now, that's a hard one. Um, as a political weapon. It has helped me for uh, 30 years defend the rights of American blacks and third world um, people all over the world to defend them with protest songs. And it helps to change the world. When you get up on the stage and you sing, what's in your mind? Just the singing? To no, to move the audience, to make them uh, conscious of what has been done to my people around the world. So you sing from anger? No, I sing from uh, uh, intelligence. I sing from letting them know that I know who they are and what they have done to my people around the world. That's not anger. It, anger. Anger has its place. Anger has fire, and fire moves things. But uh, I sing from intelligence. I don't want them to think that I don't know who they are, darling. <laughs> who are they? They are the white people around the world, with the exception of Nelson Mandela, whom I met this year. I went to his marriage and his anniversary in 1998. And you weren't disappointed? Oh, no, my God. He's a saint. He's the greatest person on the planet. How much does fame mean to you? How much does your success mean to my you? My success means a great deal to me, and my stage presence and being on stage means a great deal to me. My music is first in my life. And what second? What do you sacrifice for your music? I anything? don't sacrifice anything for my music. But secondly, I would love to be married, you know. I think I married the cameraman over there. <laughs> but I would love to be married. I have a man of my own, but that's second to my music. My music, nothing takes its place. Nothing. You've been married before. Have you been, un been unlucky? Twice. Unlucky at love? Yeah, un 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 unlucky at marriages. Not so unlucky at love. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love, few marriages. Yes, two marriages. Why didn't they work out? Uh, the music got in the way. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the one where I married the cop from the United States, the music got in the way, and he treated me like a horse. You know, a non-stop workaholic horse. And the one in Tunisia, well, that was very hot like a, like a volcano. Uh, and his family didn't want him to move to France. And France didn't want him because he's a North, Ameri North African. And the volcano didn't last? 
No, but it lasted long enough for me never to forget it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Among all the unforgettable things and unforgettable people in your life, there was Martin Luther King, wasn't there? Oh, yes. Well, I marched with him. I knew him. I composed a song for him. I knew his wife, all his children, and I was in the Selma march with him and the march on Alabama at Miles College in Alabama and the march on Washington. I was right beside his side. We saw the public face of him. We saw the public man. What was he like in those private moments when he was out of the public eye? <coughs> Darling, he was always on stage. His, his dedication was of such immense proportion that he never forgot for a minute that he was there to lead my people. He never forgot that for a minute. And uh, when he was not on stage, he was still on stage. He was always talking about equal rights. You've said in the past that you would have worked to try to get him to the presidency. Do you think realistically that he could ever have had a shot at yes, the presidency? Yes, he could have. Yes, he could have, baby. He could have if, we'd, if he hadn't gotten killed and we'd have had a little bit more support. You really think that America was ready for a black president? Yes, I do. Because even black politicians in Washington these days say they don't think that's the case. We well, talk not now. Jesse Jackson was no match for him. There's not been a man since then. And his dream came true with Nelson Mandela. Because Nelson got it done in South Africa. In South Africa. So the same thing that was done in South Africa could have, could have been, been, been done. done in the United States. Yes, I distinctly believe that. I need a cigarette. You're making me hot. Can I have a light, uh, um, please? Go ahead. How did you feel when he died? Oh, Martin God, Luther man, King. I was devastated. I wrote a song in his honor the next day called The King of Love is Dead. How much did that devastate you? I mean, what did it do oh, to I, you? Oh, I life? think I must have cried for two weeks. And it killed my inspiration for the civil rights movement I'm ready. In the United States, and I moved away.